Roll Tide and welcome back to Crimson Drive, driven by NASCAR. We're back at Bryant Denny Stadium inside the Advantage Center at our podcast studio. I'm Roger Hoover. Now, please be joined by Alabama defensive back and one of the top tacklers on this team so far this year, Bray Hubbard, as we get set for week four against Georgia. And Bray, Roll Tide. It's roll been a fun tide. start to the season. Yeah, it has. It's been a great season so far. Got a big matchup coming up this week, so excited for it. How did you uh, use the open date to your advantage this past week? Shoot, it's... Recovery, get your body right, get your legs back under you. I mean, it's we all needed it, so it was uh it was good. I mean, I got to go home for a second, see my family, see my brother and all my siblings. So it was we played golf a little bit, but only nine holes, couldn't play eighteen. So yeah, I just went home, uh, got my feet back under me, did some recovery stuff, and so feeling good for this week. Where's home for you? Ocean Springs, Mississippi, but uh, now I live in Madison, Mississippi, because my dad retired and he moved up there, so. Yeah, I drove to Madison. That's good. Uh, what can you tell us about growing up, first of all, in Ocean Springs? Because everyone, I'm sure, just points to the beach right away or golf, things like yeah. that. How was it for you? No, it was, it's it's great. I mean, most people come down there for the beach, but we have a great downtown, great places to eat, and I mean, probably one of the best school districts in, in Mississippi. So I, I loved it down there. I loved growing up. I wouldn't rather grow up anywhere else but Ocean Springs. I mean, most of my family's down there, so I know I'm a coast boy from down there, so I mean, Ocean Springs is a great place. I, I'd go visit it if I were you. So. <laughs> yeah, I've been down there a lot, especially around Biloxi a few oh, times, yeah, too. Oh, yeah, so. Yeah, uh, really good place. And for you, was it a perfect place to grow up loving sports? How'd you get involved in sports? Uh, I started at an early age. I had an older brother, so uh, I was always on his teams playing up, which I think helped me moving forward as I got older. But, um, yeah, so, I mean, it's it's great. We got a bunch of different things to do down there. We got a great football team, great baseball team. All of our sports at our high school are really good, so that helps a lot. But, uh, yeah, it's, that's about it, though. And then you developed into a really good football player. I think all of us <clears throat> now know you here at Alabama on defense, but tell us about your work on the other side of the ball oh, on offense. Yeah, it was crazy. Uh, I started playing quarterback when I was a sophomore in high school just because I played baseball. That's what I was – I was actually going to play baseball before I came here. So – uh I always could throw the ball, whatever, and so when my new head coach, we got a new head coach my sophomore year, and he moved me to quarterback. I actually started at corner my freshman year uh, on varsity, so that was kind of different, too. Then to flip right back to offense my sophomore year and play quarterback, I played quarterback for three my last three years of high school, and first year was kind of rough, kind of figure out everything, but uh, my junior and senior year, that's when I kind of took off and Threw for a lot of touchdowns, ran for a lot of touchdowns and yards, and that's it. So, How'd you improve at quarterback? I mean, you mentioned it was kind of rough at first. What did you start to master as time went on? Really, it was just my passing game was new, so I had to learn how to read defenses and stuff like that. And that was difficult sophomore year. Then in the offseason going into my junior year, I really had to step it up because I knew like if we wanted to win, I got to be able to go through the air now. So that's what I did. I Worked on my game all through the spring and summer of getting my passing game down, doing different things, and sure enough, my junior year, first I think it was the first game of the season, I think I threw for four and ran for two, and it was like the coach on the other side was like, where did that come from? <laughs> so it was that's then out through the year, we just kept going, and I think I ended that year with my junior year with 52 touchdowns. It was 30 through the air and 22 on the ground. So it was a big improvement from I don't even remember how many I had. I think I had four passing touchdowns my uh, my sophomore year. And it was – but then coming to my junior year, it was, it was a great season. So That really is good numbers. And, again, you got nearly every award there is for a Mississippi high school player to win yeah, at that time. How would you handle all that attention? I just – I mean, I don't even know. I just – I was very humble in high school. I just kind of – did my thing and enjoyed being around my friends and stuff. I mean, I didn't really get all the the hype. I wasn't like a big recruit for for all the achievements that I had in high school. I mean, I wasn't your top recruit or anything like that. So I really just played. I didn't go play seven on seven. I didn't do any of that. I just played regular, normal eleven on eleven football at my high school, and it's just it just I guess naturally came, and I just didn't try to force anything. Just kind of did my thing and. Let it come to me. So, so you mentioned recruiting. Uh, you were thinking about baseball for a while. Obviously, you had the skill set at quarterback as well. Were you recruited by a lot of schools as a quarterback? Uh, yeah. So, only had 
all my other offers to play besides Mississippi State were to play quarterback. So Mississippi State offered me as a uh, receiver. Uh, Alabama offered me as a safety. And all of my other ones were to play quarterback because I was your dual threat. I guess you could say it was dual threat quarterback. So that's what they uh, they all wanted me to come play. So When did uh, Alabama enter the picture? You said they offered you as a safety. When did you first uh, get your contact It was here? my junior year spring. I think it was, uh, yeah, it was Pete Golden at the time came. Um, he came through. They do it all their recruiting thing. It was actually, I don't remember if it was round one or two of the baseball playoffs, and he wanted to see me work out with the football team because he was like, I want to see this guy work out. I need to get some whatever. So I sure enough, I had to go do like a workout before and do like hang clean, the squat, all this stuff. And I caught at the time for my baseball team. And so – I don't know. My legs were kind of shot, but I mean, I had to do it. And he, uh, yeah, he came down and he was like, "Hey, we want to get you up in front of coach, all this stuff." So then I came up. Um, I think it was June fourth was when I did camp here, and um, then I came back a couple days and had to do some more, um, more work with all the staff and stuff like that. And I got that's when I got my offer here. But uh, it was a it was a long process and. Just because during the summer I was playing baseball, too, with travel baseball. So I'd be, say, we'd be in Birmingham, then we'd have to swing by Tuscaloosa and then come down or go from Tuscaloosa. One one weekend I went from Birmingham. I came here. The next day or that night we drove to Starkville. Woke up the next day, did a camp there, then drove home. And the next day I was in Georgia at a camp or a Young Life camp, which is like a little church camp. So it was a busy couple or busy week i should say for all all the recruiting stuff and the baseball stuff combined so that's pretty big i mean it's hitting you all at once in that moment uh how was it getting to interact with coach saban for the first time uh it was kind of intimidating i mean he doesn't doesn't really show many emotions and as a high schooler i mean trying to get i mean it's it's a dream i mean i guess it's everybody's dream to come play here and just having him at the camp i mean it's people really didn't realize about his camps that they were like it's coaching it's hard coaching like it's it's rough I remember we were doing um drills to start the camp and I was I thought I was gonna die I mean them camps were rough I was like I don't see how people do this but no it's just it's he treats you like players he treats everybody like players I mean he wants the best for you so it was it was different though that's certainly good and then uh, as you go from that junior year to your senior year what allowed Alabama to win out in the recruiting battle yeah, just um, everything really just uh, transformed into a great man. That's what that's what the main part of it was. I knew that what the process and all that was. But I mean, it's not just football here. It's gonna he he wants you to be a great man when you leave here too. And that was the big part of it. And also having a great education was super big. And I mean, everybody thinks that football lasts forever, but really it doesn't. At some point, you got it ends, and so. You gotta have something to rely on, and I knew here that you know I'm gonna get a great degree, and and so with Coach Saban and all the staff that we got, they do a great job with transforming us into great men, but also academically they get us on the right path to get a college degree. Historically, if you're able to play at Alabama under Coach Saban, you got to first prove it you can play on special teams, and that's where we saw you for the first time last year. Uh, what you really do in practice to kind of earn those moments of playing time you had a year ago? Yeah, I just I just kept going hard every day. I mean, you never know with injuries and stuff what happens. I mean, I tell even the young guys today because I mean I started I didn't start on special teams the first. I don't remember how many games it was at first four or five games I was just sitting on the sideline just on backup on special teams and boom somebody gets hurt and you're up and you got to know what you're doing but then it started in practice too just going hard every day and just I mean you got to take advantage of the rep you get I mean that's that's the key to it you got to take advantage of it and I just I wasn't mad about it I was like man like I'm bringing value to our team like whatever whatever they call me to do in this game like I got to do it to the best of my ability to help the team out. And so, I mean, I started out, I think, just on kickoff. And then towards the end of the year, I was on punt return and uh, kickoff return. And it just I just stayed ready because, I mean, you never know what's going to happen. It's a long season, and you got to be ready to go. So, 
Yeah, that allowed you to play in some huge ball games of the Iron Bowl, the SEC Championship game, the Rose Bowl as well. And then uh, on a Wednesday afternoon in January, you go into what you thought maybe would be a typical meeting, oh. and then kind of everything changed, right? Yeah, it was that that meeting was crazy. I mean, I don't know. The way I was getting it was that he was coming back for another year. Then he hit us with the freaking brick. He was like, "Boom, I'm retiring." I was like, "Oh." Every, I think the room went silent for maybe a minute straight. We didn't know what to do. We were just like, what in the world? And But his speech the whole time was like he was coming back for another year and dropped a bomb on us, and everybody was like, no way. But, no, it was it was crazy. But How would you kind of handle that time in between Coach Saban retiring and then uh, Friday night when Coach DeBoer came in? Well, it was – I mean, it was definitely hard just – but, I mean, I trusted, trusted Greg Byrne. I mean, he told us – Hey, give me what seventy-two hours? I think it was he told us, and he he held his word. And but I knew also that whoever they were going to bring in here is going to be the best possible coach that we're going to get possible. And so that's that was part of the process for me. We're like, hey, like I'm gonna trust it. I gotta trust it. I mean, we got a great team here. I mean, it's not like everybody's going to leave this place and stuff like that. We got a great. We're going to have a great staff no matter what, and great support team everywhere around us. But it was hard. Know what was next, or who who the coach was going to be, whatever it's going to be. But uh, 72 hours, Greg Byrne hold his word, and boom, Coach DeBoer came in. It was it was funny because the day that Coach DeBoer um, got the job, we got a text saying, "Hey, team meeting tonight. It'll be with Coach DeBoer." Well, it was a Friday, and so I drove home for the weekend because I was just like, "I'm gonna just get out of Tuscaloosa. It's been a hard week. <laughs> like I need to go home." So I'm sitting on the couch. I haven't been sitting on the couch for 30 minutes, and that text come through. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. I'm like, I'm not going to make the meeting. i got to drive three hours back. And so I text Ellis. I'm like, hey, Ellis, like, what time is this meeting going to be? And he was like, oh, it's not going to be till later. We got, you know, he's flying in from Washington and all this. And I was like, oh, thank goodness. So I hopped back in the truck, drove all the way to Tuscaloosa for the team meeting. And then we had a team meeting with Coach DeBoer. Then I ended up driving back home. Me and my brother came back with me to Tuscaloosa, so then he hopped in the driver's seat and drove back home for the weekend. So <laughs> That's a lot of driving. <laughs> no, it was a lot of driving. So uh, Well, great that Alabama got him in place. Uh, when did you have a chance to get to meet him really one-on-one? Um, it was really uh, right after he uh, got the job. He kind of sat down with all of us, and we had meeting times where we could go in and talk to him. He just And it was really just see where our heads were and – that you know he was excited for all of us and but we I mean we have a great we had a great group group of guys that stayed I mean we didn't have many guys leave and so we all knew the same culture we hold the same culture so I mean it was but he brought us all in to his office to introduce himself he wanted to know more about us personally and everything so it was it was it was great so not only Coach DeBoer comes in, but he brings in a new defensive coordinator in Kane Womack. He had been a head coach. Maurice Lingwis comes in to be your position coach. He'd been a head coach at Buffalo. Uh, what did you enjoy about getting to know those two guys and the vision they had for your group? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a – I mean, you could tell Coach Womack with his success down in South Alabama. I mean, that Mobile is only 45 minutes from my hometown. So, um, I've heard all about that. I have multiple friends that go to South Alabama, so – I've seen everything that their defense did at South Alabama. I mean, they were kind of lights out and uh, down there. So, uh, but then Coach Mo, I remember Coach Mo when he first got here, he uh, sat us all down in the, te- in, in the team room, which is our meeting room, and he was just like, "Hey, man, like we're getting ready to work. We're gonna whatever." And uh, but no, it was it was great. I mean, you don't see a lot of head coaches giving up jobs to go somewhere else, but they were like, "This is the place to be. Like we're giving up head coach jobs to come here." Like. This is where we want to be. And he was like, let's get to work. One of the captains from last year is in your room, uh, Malachi Moore, voted on as a captain before the season as well. Just how important is he as a leader for this team? Oh, yeah. I mean, he's been here for, what is this, his fifth year now? So, I mean, he knows everything. He's been here through Coach Saban, the whole process of that. And he's just a true leader. I mean, he comes in the building every day just ready to work, ready to get guys better. He's, I mean, he's a role model. I mean, that's the guy I look up to in our room. And so – but he's a great leader, and, you know, with the big change, I mean, he came back for his fifth year to play. Well, he wasn't expecting Coach Saban to retire, all this stuff. So, I mean, but now, I mean, it's, it's just crazy how just – he's such a role model and just a great leader that kind of brought us all in together and just 
I mean, we get we got to work because I mean he's he's in the building every day, freaking working hard, and so we saw that from him. Saw that from our other captains we got. That's why they're voted captains. I mean, they came in every day, just ready to work. And but yeah, Malachi, he's he's a different guy, great guy. So talks about last year being ready for your moment whenever it came on special teams. Obviously, it did happen uh, for you on defense this year. Uh, what led to some of the good work you had in fall camp and allowed you to get on the field as early as you have on the defensive side of the ball? Yeah, I think just you know just playing consistency is just that's the big key, and you got to be consistent and. Um, yeah, I think just knowing and it's trust, really. You got you to trust all the guys around you, and they have to trust you too. And if there's no trust, I mean, it's hard to it's hard to play. And so you got to have that trust from the guys around you. But it, I mean, it's preparation every week, week in, week out, just in fall camp, all through summer, just getting ready to go, knowing what you're doing, and and to the best of your ability, that's that's the key to getting on the field. So, how much does being a former quarterback help you in what you do now? It helps because I mean you can kind of you can kind of see what guys want to do just with how they're I mean coverage what what a quarterback's doing you can read a quarterback he's going to tell you what he's going to do with his eyes everything he's not going to you know he's not going to trick you but I mean it helps because I know like what I tried to do when I was trying to move guys around and but I mean what you know college quarterbacks are a lot better than high school quarterbacks but it's kind of still the same thing but it helps me a lot just you know I can kind of see what the quarterback's doing and helps me know where the ball is going to go. So when you're watching film, you kind of put yourself in like a guy like Carson Beck's shoes and kind of say, okay, what does he like to do? What is this George offense yeah. trying to do each play? Yeah, yeah. You can you can put yourself in his shoes and you can tell that uh, just what they're trying to do, just who, is, who his guys are. If Say his guys are wherever they are, he's going to look over there and, and he wants the ball to go to his guys, so. Well, it's going to be exciting coming up this Saturday, Alabama against Georgia under the lights here at Saving Field, Bryant-Denny Stadium. Uh, just how much do you love home games here at Tuscaloosa? What's your favorite part of game day? Oh, I don't know. Uh, game day is just crazy around here. I mean, it's it's a place like no other. So uh, uh, I'm trying to think what was my favorite part of game day. Uh, can't beat Dixieland at light in the fourth <laughs> quarter. I mean, it's it's crazy. It's funny. All the fans getting involved in it. It's, it's great, but... Walk of Champions too is cool. Just seeing, I mean, it's crazy when when the buses pull up to the Walk of Champions. I mean, I'm like, how long have y'all been sitting out here? <laughs> y'all got to be standing hours. out there for hours, especially <laughs> the people on the front, yeah. uh, on the gates or whatever. I'm like, y'all got to be standing out here for hours. I'm like, y'all, true fans right there, loyal fans. So you usually have something playing in your headphones, or you try to go uh, headphones off to try to soak no, in I, the crowd. No, I, uh, I have stuff playing in my headphones, just some chill country music, just whatever it is. Just you know, I just I don't like to be like super like amped up on stuff, so I just kind of relax and chill. So that's it. <laughs> that's certainly good. Uh, just how much you've enjoyed this experience, getting to be a, a student athlete at a place like Alabama with all the resources you have, and again, how notable this program is all around the country. Yeah, it's 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 a blessing to be here. I mean, you got a great support staff all around us um, with academics, coaching staff. I mean, it, we got it all here. I mean, it's 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 really an honor. Just just the way that um, just they just help us out every day. I mean, it's we got a great we have great staff. I mean, it's they keep you healthy. I mean, whether it's in the training staff, whatever it is, whatever we need, we can get it. And that that's huge with I mean, it, cuz it's difficult. It's not it's not an easy play, an easy sport to play at a college level and especially here, I mean, with the standard with the greatness we have here. I mean, it's and we have a great support staff that helps us day in day out that keeps us going every day. So did you go to the Joe a lot this spring? You miss baseball? Uh, no, nah, I went, I think my freshman spring, I went a lot. Um, I went to a couple games, but I mean, I miss baseball a little bit, but I'm on the bigger, better things now, so I can't complain. Yeah, you're locked into football. Uh, we'll get you out on this. Uh, Alabama against Georgia on Saturday. What's the biggest priority for this tie defense against Georgia? Yeah, I think just, we got to play just fundamentally sound, and I think the key is, Got to be better in the run game with everything, but uh, also stopping the pass. That's the big thing. And so um, playing physical, too. We got we to gotta play physical this week. So I think that's a, that's a key part today is being physical on line of scrimmage and everything. We got to be physical everywhere, dominate physically. And, uh, yeah, and then got to be ready for number 15. That's going to be a big challenge. He's a great quarterback, and he knows what he's doing. He's been in that offense. What is it, his second or third year now starting? So, I mean, he's – 
and he's got great guys around him, great playmakers, but so do we. So we're ready for it. We look forward to it. Bray Hubbard, thank you for your time. Roll Tide. Roll Tide.